All right, guys. So in this video, we are once again back with a trading view tutorial. This is part four of our trading view tutorial for 2021. And in this one, we are going to focus on indicators. We will take a look at, for example, the RSI, the MACD, uh, moving averages and more. But yeah, guys, without further ado, let's get started right away here. And real quick, before we jump into the chart, I just want to mention that before you jump into trading view, you definitely want to sign up. Why? Well, because if you don't sign up, you will always get a annoying pop up window. So you definitely want to do that. Trading view both have a paid version and a free version. And in my opinion, the, the free version is very good and a very good, you know, way to start. Uh, and if you want to, I actually have a special trading view sign up link. It will be both in the description, but also in the pinned comment. Uh, and you can use that link to, you know, sign up for free. But then if you later on decide to get a pro version uh, or premium version, you can get up to a, you know, $30 bonus. And at the same time, you support and help out the channel. So that would be so awesome, guys. But all right, now let's jump into the chart here and let's open, for example, Bitcoin. So to open Bitcoin, we type the ticker symbol BTC USD. So Bitcoin measured in US dollars. We click that one and, and to open the actual chart, we click full featured chart right here. And the default view is that we see a sort of line chart, but we want candlesticks. And to do that, we go up here to the corner, click the area right here, and then we go down and choose candles. So now we have a beautiful candlestick chart right here and we are good to go. All right, so let's say we wanna open an indicator. To do that, we go up to the top left corner. You can see that we have a button that says indicators right, right here. And then we get this pop-up window, indicator and strategies. And here you will both have something called built-ins. And this is indicators that are built in into TradingView. But you will actually also have a public library. And this is indicators that you know are made of users. So for example, here we have an uh, indicator that is called a squeeze momentum indicator by someone called Lazy Beer um, that is used a lot. You can see it has 70,000 likes. So that is one thing I think is very awesome with trading views that the user base is sort of helping out to create, you know, tools and indicators that we all can enjoy and use. But in this video, I'm going to focus on some uh, built ins and some very normal and widely used indicators. And let's start by taking a look at the moving average. So to get the moving average, we basically search here moving average. Here we have basically three different main types or it's basically two different main times first we have the moving average uh, and then we have something called exponential and weighted moving average and let's start by you know opening the moving average also called the simple moving average and here we get this pop-up window and this was and this was the window i talked about that pops up every time if you don't sign up for trading view uh, so we want to close this one but all right so now on the chart you can see that we have a moving average and the moving average is the line that sort of follows the price you can see the blue line that goes something like this and what the moving average basically tells you is that it gives you a value that is an average price of a certain time period for example if you look up on the left corner, you can see that it right now says MA9. What this means is that the moving average is based on nine days. So when we're talking about a simple moving average, that means that the blue line will represent the average price of the last nine days. And if you want to change what the moving average is based on, what you do is that you go up here to where it says MA, moving average for short you hover over this one and you click the settings button and here you can see where it says inputs right here you have something called length and this is basically what type of moving average do you want and when you when you hear things such as the 50 day moving average the 200 day moving average and so on and so on this is basically that you change the length to whatever you want so if you for example type 50 here then the moving average will be based on 50 candles. And if you have daily candles so that every candle represents one day, then it will be a 50 day moving average. So let's choose 50 days as length. And while we are here, we can also show how we change the style. So 
to change the style you basically go, go to this style button right here and you click on the color button right here you can both change the color so let's say we want a you know orange color then we just choose, choose orange and we can also we can also change the thickness here of the line so we maybe want the line you know very thick so let's choose that now we have a thick moving average and here opacity basically changes if you want the line to you know be uh, more or less invincible like this so there you have some choices let's say we want a fat orange moving average like that uh, and here we are basically good to go so right here we have a 50 day moving average meaning that the value of the moving average is basically uh the average of the last 50 days so if we have a random point here on the moving average uh, this point is the average price for bitcoin of the last 50 days so you take all the 50 days and then divide by 50 and you will get this uh, value so this is a common moving average let's say that we want to open a new moving average and at the same time have this line on the chart what we do we press indicators once again built-ins moving average and we basically press that one and now we have a new moving average you can see once again we got this you know sort of blue line popping up let's change this one we press settings we once again want to change style we want to make this one fat but this time let's keep it as blue so we can you know so we can differentiate between the moving averages uh, let's also change the inputs here so we want the moving average to be based on 20 days so in this case we have a 20 day moving average and okay so here we have the 50 day moving average and the 20 day moving average and what you can notice here is that the 20 day moving average seems to follow the price a bit more closely, right? So when the price goes up, like for example here, the moving average reacts faster to the price movement. Same thing, it goes down, it reacts faster to the price movement. And the reason it acts faster is because, because it is only based on 20 days, while the orange line here is based on 50 days. So there you have some basics on moving averages. Now let's go to our second indicator I wanna take a look at, and that is the RSI indicator, or for short, the relative strength index. So let's take a look here at built-ins and search for RSI. And if you search for RSI, you can see the first built-in that pops up is the relative strength index. And you can also see here that when you search, you will also get the public library. And that is, you know, uh, users that have made their uh, special versions of different types of RSIs. But let's use the basic RSI right here, the relative strength index. So when you open the relative strength index, it looks like this. You can see it's the line below the chart. If you want to change how large this part is, uh, you can basically hover over the line right here. Uh, you can drag it up and down like this. And if you want to change how how zoomed in or zoomed out the actual relative strength index is, you can hover over the vertical axis right here and zoom in and out like this. And if you want to drag this uh, RSI around, you can basically hold this one and drag like this. You can see you can drag it up and down. Just make sure that you have the uh, select button here on the upper left corner, the cross button selected uh, in order to do all of these kind of stuff. But all right, so what is the relative strength index? Well, the most simple way to describe it is that it is a measure of momentum. So the relative strength index basically measures how significant have the recent price movement been compared to earlier price movements or you can also think of it how extreme is the price value compared to the most recent values so when we have been having recently a very strong force to the upside for example this part right here then the rsi so here we got this annoying pop-up once again so i just want to remind you guys that please uh, make sure to sign up because now uh, i have to refresh the page and i think everything we have on the chart will actually be lost all right so we lost what we had on the chart but whatever so what does the relative strength index mean well to uh, simplify it it's basically a measure of momentum so if we see a strong force to the upside 
relative to the prior price movement, then the RSI tends to move also strongly to the upside. So for example, if you take a look at this part of the chart right here, you can see that this is definitely a strong impulse to the upside compared to the recent price action. And when we see moves like this, we get a high RSI. We have a very high momentum. And we can, for example, also take a look at the downside. This part right here for Bitcoin, here we had a pretty strong momentum shift, but to the downside. So this price action was very negative compared to the recent price action. So that led to a very strong drop here on the RSI. And in general, you can see here when you look at the RSI chart that you have numbers here that goes pretty much from 100 down to zero. You can see here on the vertical axis. And one general rule of thumb is that when the RSI is above 70, so when we are at this white area right here, then we say that an asset is overbought. When the RSI is below 30, then we say that an asset is oversold but this is just a very you know, general rule of thumb. And this is also what is displayed here on the RSI. So you can see the shaded area right here. This is the sort of normal area and where the RSI usually is. So most of the time you will see RSIs in between 70 and 30. And when it's above 70, overbought, below 30, oversold. So for example, if we take a look at right here on uh, January, around January 8th, Bitcoin was very overbought because it had an RSI of almost 90. 90 RSI is very high. However, it's never good to, you know, only look at the RSI because an asset can stay overbought for long, long periods of times. If you, for example, look at Bitcoin right here. So Bitcoin stayed overbought in a period between December 16 and uh, January 10. So it would, for example, have been a very bad idea to short Bitcoin here on December 25th because Bitcoin almost doubled in value during that time and the RSI stayed overbought during that whole rally. But all right, guys, so now I want to look at how to customize your RSI because you can, as always, on pretty much all the uh, trading view indicators, you can customize it. To do that, we hover over where it says RSI here on the left and we press the settings button. So first of all, you have the RSI is as all the indicators based on a certain length. And the standard for the RSI is to base it on uh, 14 days or whatever time frame you are using. But we can also change the style here. So the RSI, that is the color of the actual line. I can change this to my personal style. I usually have orange as the line. The upper band and lower band, I don't think I change. The background, I usually have uh, like this. I think I actually usually have it as this, but it looks pretty bad when you have a white chart. I usually have a black chart, so I can just show real quick how you change the uh, sort of color of the chart. So something like this is more of as I have it personally. Uh, I think this is a beautiful look of the RSI. But yeah, guys, I actually think I will wrap this video up right here. And in the next one, we will continue to take a look at some more indicators, such as, for example, the MACD, the Stochastic, and some more uh, things. But yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you feel like you got any kind of help or value, then please consider dropping a like. And if you guys are interested in more similar content, then don't hesitate to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day, and I hope I will catch you in the next video. But for now, guys, take care. Ciao, ciao.